Let's go. Boom. Sigurd Jong yes. Janssen. Oh, yes. <laughs> Did I get the accent right? Yeah, kind of, actually. Well, the, the Danish letter is always, it's always a problem. It's okay. the U. It's, it's the... Jung. Jung? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Jung. Okay, next time for round three, I'll I'll nail it. I promise, bro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> bro. You, it's it's uh, been it's been a minute since we've talked. Oh yeah, a minute and, or two. That's for sure. Yeah, and and a lot has happened on your end, on my yeah. end, on oh our yeah, end. and um yeah, and uh, let's let's hear about it. let's uh let's hear what's been happening with you in the past. Uh, I think it's been what four four months since we last talked. So. Yeah, I actually think, is it even longer than that? Possibly. Hmm. What are we in now? April. When would it? No, last time we talked for your podcast, it was, it was hot and summertime. I think. Right here. So yeah, it's I actually remember. almost a year. Shit. Almost. Hey. Whoa! Oh. I remember. Uh, you, you know oh. what? You're so right because I remember being in Israel. We were uh, recording. Yeah. While I was in Israel. You were in Denmark. Ah, oh, damn. Yeah. yeah, because I remember because it was really hot because I was watering my mom's plants because she was on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, you know what? Like, I, I feel like what I what I um liked about you when I listened to you on um on Richard's podcast is you're so <laughs> personal and relatable. And oh feel- well. I'm just a human like anyone else, you know. I got the same problems and I got the same highs and yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean like it's it's funny because I feel like uh, people people feel the need to flex and to show and to yeah. do things like that. Yeah. And it's okay. It's just like it's an it's yeah, an yeah, yeah. ego thing and it's a personal thing and it's uh, uh and I don't feel any of that from you, which is fucking cool. No. And uh, I can just like be an open book next to you, I feel like. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we all share, uh, you know, our wins. Of course, if, if you get a placement in something, why not share it, right? Because it's this whole industry is still, even though I don't actually like it, it's it's still very much about do you exist mm. in in the in the universe, right? Mm. Um, if you believe in stuff like that, but mm. <laughs> but but you know, if if of course. Uh, music placed in TV and trailers and so on. It's 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 still very much the work of your publisher doing a lot of networking and pitching and so on. But for example, if you want to work with bigger publishers or if you want to write film scores or something directly with a director, then they need to know that you exist. Mm. And you don't do if if you don't shout out in in the absolute chaos of noise there already is on, on social media. But I don't see it as a ego thing per se. Because there's there's for me at least there's there's not much of this, hey, look at me, see how good I am. It's more of a, you know, hey, I do exist if you need audio and music. And then I crawl back into the shadows of my studio <laughs> yeah. and being the true the true introvert that I actually am. <laughs> but I, I said that I, I feel like um maybe you misunderstood what I was saying. I, I was saying mm. that the the fact is you're able, you know, people who have achieved success a lot of the times yeah. hold themselves back with again like saying stuff like I was watering my yeah. mom's plants when I when we were talking oh. something like that. You know, like so, so that I just love that little little nuance and um oh yeah 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 but man i'm not afraid to say that we just bought a pretty cool house with a pretty cool room for a studio but i 100 percent bought it because of the garden i don't give a fuck about the rest (laughs) i just want to be a a dude mowing his lawn and doing stuff in the garden and just being normal normal human being type Mm. thing (laughs) Yeah, man, I, I feel like um, that's there's a few things, a few topics I want to do podcasts on. Like one is definitely uh, um, health and and things that are overlooked oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. things that are 
you know, like garden to me is, is it's health in so many ways. It's first of all, like physical, yeah. like you go to, you get to be mm -hmm. in the sun, you get to interact with the ground, with the, um, with the, with the sun, with, with nature, uh, which is, um, it's, it's in, it's, I think it's a, it's, it's a natural, it's just a natural enhancer of everything, right? Like, of yeah, exactly. Primal needs. Um, yeah. In a world where, I mean, we are as composers, like the, the C shaped back and all that kind of stuff. Um, oh yeah. Is, is, is definitely a fucking like people who are 30 look like they're 60. A lot of the time. Oh yeah. It's bad. And, and it's now, getting like, really I, bad now. Yeah. And now after watching, yeah. like uh, I, I've, I know some people are going to go, Oh my God, but I just watched wall E for the first time and it feels like, Oh my God, oh. this is, this is where the world yeah. is going kind of place oh shit <laughs> where i, I, where I yeah. don't know like people are diff just like sitting and not moving and not remembering how it is yeah. to move so yeah I, I feel like it's a very good topic to get into to ask like what does it mean to be human as a, 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 of course like everybody wants to hustle everybody wants to to, yeah. to get these placements everybody wants to get that money everybody wants to to uh, uh to be excited to share more placements but how are you how are you operating as a human as well? Like, mm, that's an yeah, question to ask. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, and it's a question that not even talk, but just think about it for hours and hours on end, right? Because is there really a a a, a is there a true answer to what it means to be human? But that well, that's mm. a, a question to answer. <laughs> mm. But I guess for me. The whole human thing is basically interacting with other people, mm. and it does doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, out and about because we also have to accept somehow that we are in a very extreme digital age where you and I can s sit and talk here, and and that's also being social in in, in the new normal way, right? Um, but but I think. Being, being human to me is is just to spend time with people you know and and is that in a creative endeavor as a writer or producer composer thing that could be one of them uh, or is it just chilling in the garden for a whole mm -hmm. day with people you know but damn that that's 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 a mind-bending question what does it mean to be human? Because mm. does anyone actually know what it means to be human? Isn't that kind of the the great big question right after what happens when we die? Mm. <laughs> it's, it's the whole, you know, why are we actually here? Well, basically we're here to live, but why? Mm. You know, so so it's, it's a, a, for me, answering that question always circles back to a new question it's mm. it's so hard to answer and i also think it's it's such a it's such a personal thing i could never in in a million years tell you what it means to be human for you i can only say what it means to me mm. right because we all see and perceive the world differently mm. somehow 100 yeah. percent. but and and um before we were we got on the podcast you were talking uh i remember you were telling me earlier this yeah in this time that we haven't spoke uh, spoken and we've we've done it's, it's so cool like the way that we've just kept in touch because you're just like yeah homie I, you become a homie and i i think about you and i just yeah, send you sure. a message sometimes and it's like yeah so for sure cool. um yeah but but you were you were speaking to something first of all you've been doing more in the game space right Oh yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, definitely, and, and um, and I've actually talked to, with a few with a few people who are on here about the the game the game uh, the game industry, and it's still not. I don't have enough information on it to be honest on the no. podcast, um, which I'd love us to expand on. And oh, yeah, also, sure. and also, <laughs> I would love to to um to double click after that on how you go about mm -hmm. um 
this networking and the thing that you are doing right now, which is, I'll just, I'll just, um, I'll just tease it for people who are listening and I'll oh, say yeah. that you are networking in a, um, a very cool way to me. Like it's a, it's a very cool way. I, I mean, I network through the podcast. I would network through things like that, yeah. but you've actively taken a really, uh, taken it seriously to, to sow these seeds, uh, in order for them to potentially grow in the future. And I would love to talk about this too, but first of all, would you be able to just explain your knowledge of the gaming world, of the game uh, game oh. world and composition for games and all that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, games and game music has always been a, a very, very big passion of mine. And, you know, started out as a kid, actually just spending way too much time on video games. Uh, and I still do, <laughs> um, but but you know very early on, I I noticed the both the the sound design, the sound effects, and and so on, and the music in the game. I I was I kind of was listening to it while playing, even already as a kid. Uh, but at the time, I had no idea that, you know, kids don't think <laughs> like that. So so. I, I didn't think about who did the music and, and why there even was music. I just enjoyed it. Um, and then a lot of time goes by and I stumble upon a true time eater called World of Warcraft. <laughs> and, uh, and that's kind of the first time in games where I really, really noticed the music and, you know, bought the soundtrack and listened to the music outside of the game and in, enjoyed it that way. Um, so that basically just, that was the start. That got me into doing music for games. And, and it started out like any other endeavor in the creative world, you know, just like starting a band, you have to do some free work and you have to ask a lot, can, can I do this? And can I do that? And can I compose a bit of music? And, to some sound effects and you know the snowball much faster than you anticipate just like trailer music once the ball gets rolling <laughs> you suddenly see maybe more placements quite quickly or much many more briefs from from different publishers and, and so on so it was it was a natural transition for me to go into game music and 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 you know, just starting out in the small and and getting to work with bigger and bigger people and developers. Um, so yeah, that's that was kind of the the journey into game music. I would say it's 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 a it's a hard one to kind of map out inside mm -hmm. my head because I've always been doing so much different music stuff. I also did a lot of touring in bands while I was were, were pursuing this this video game music thing. Um, and then in between comes all the library stuff for trailers and TV. So so it's a big mishmash of everything. Mm. But but video game music is my big passion. But mm. I guess I guess it, it links up with the whole trailer thing because games take such a long time to make. Uh, especially AAA games, they take a very long time to make. But the music part can probably sometimes be six months or even less. So if I get a game gig today and I get the music done and they still have two years of development left, I have to do something in between, right? <laughs> mm. So so that's actually why, why I got into the whole library thing with, with trailers and so on because then I would finish up a game project. And if I didn't have a new project lined up, I would just do a bunch of library tracks while searching for new gigs or waiting to, for anyone to email me or however things happen. <laughs> that's the, that's, it's kind of the, tri the, the tennis analogy I, I, I use in my head where, you know, like a tennis player in between, uh, in between the, time, uh, the times he hit, if they just stay in place, they're gonna get cold. So they yeah, have to exactly. Bounce. 
like they have to bounce yeah and and, and yeah. you're kind of like your library tracks are kind of the bounce in between like game yeah. to game and that's yeah exactly. super cool um i yeah. i love that and i want to to ask what is it like to work with with a game so like uh, uh, um somebody comes up to you and, and and tells you i want you to make the 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 music for my game uh i want you to do the sound design you're only doing one thing like what's what does it look like to work with a game um well, and, it's, and it's... also like uh also uh sorry another another question like for let's say royalties and stuff like that how does that work with with this world yeah okay uh, so well there, there are different ways to do the music for a game for example um not that long ago well yes actually it's a year ago <laughs> i i did uh, i did music for a game where it was this a good old first person first person you know hacking slashing game i guess you know everyone is inspired by doom and doom eternal and all that stuff uh, but but they just wanted me to do you know traditional tracks like a song like we have a verse and a chorus and a verse and a chorus and, and so on and then they would make it fit into the game and probably because it was an indie game and the budgets for doing a lot of different music they could use it was just not there so so the, so i wrote what would essentially be an album of, of songs basically um but then there is the more for me, at least for, for the work that I have encountered, the more traditional way of doing it, where you kind of have the overall tone of the game. How, how you know, if it's a horror game, is it a first person shooter? Is it a fantasy game and so on? So you have the overall tone. Um, but then the developers tend to want 30 to 60 second loops of music because, you know, if you play a game and you are in a certain area of the game or on a certain task, the game music has to be able to just loop without the player noticing. Um, but then if the player decides to go right or left or do something suddenly, then there needs to be a new loop of music, uh, which is in the same style and vibe, but changes the scene somehow so it, it can either well if 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 something very dramatic happens it's a whole new cue but it could easily just be a version two of the cue you just heard with slight variations mm. that way around and then when it comes to actually doing a soundtrack later that gets to be released then it's more about kind of fitting the pieces together you know so so sometimes sometimes it's it's actually just having this maybe this one 30 second loop with with a clear theme in it and then you kind of write a bit more music around it because the whole soundtrack is such a big part of games now especially the after the game release that everyone wants to either listen to the soundtrack or buy the soundtrack so sometimes you have to do some protos magic and mm -hmm. <laughs> and and make make it the pieces fit together so so interesting so I mean, that, like, that's that's kind of the main ways to yeah, do it's, it it's like the way that you speak about it it feels like to me like you know uh, in in whatever space you in in the other i guess sync space right right yeah um um puppy puppy matters but um oh yeah see, she's here i'll show it to you oh, wow. yeah here she is. Oy, yeah here she is. What is her name? I need to know this. Sheila. 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 Ah, very nice. Um. Anyway, what what I'm hearing is kind of the opposite of um production music, where you know you you make a full version and then you strip it off. Here you do kind of the yeah. opposite, <laughs> which is so fun. I mean, it's just like I mean, it's just like trying to brush your teeth with the left hand. <laughs> Me. yeah kind of yeah it's so, it's so weird. weird it's so weird and 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 you certainly have to 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 learn that way of of writing music uh, because maybe maybe you're working there's always a main theme that 
most of the music kind of revolves around. It's it's typically what you hear in the main menu of the game. That's always the main theme, right? Um, but but then again, when you write that, you also have have to have in mind what how that piece can evolve and how you know if 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 it's a horror game, for example then you always have to have in mind, okay, I need something where people are probably going to be chased, even though the developer haven't made anything of that mm. game content yet. And, wow. and you have to think about, oh, okay, we might have some jump scares too, so it might probably have, be a good idea to have some one-shot samples, you know, just like in trailer music, if you get a, a, you know, a sound design placement. So have, have stuff like that. So when the developer actually comes and say, hey, we have a jump scare, you already have a big library. Yes, uh, here you go. Take it and use it. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. And then there, of course, then there, of course, is the you know when there is an actual cutscene in a game where 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 you just watch it, you know, dialogue between yeah. characters or something. Then it's just scored almost to picture if if they have done the the game at that point. Wow. So, wow. So it's a big mix of everything. That's uh, that's for sure. That's crazy. That's that's wild. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I did not know a lot of this. So this is to me. Oh, it's 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 very much more like playing with you know the toy Legos than yeah. you think. Yeah. You know, it's and 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 the, we also do stems just like we absolutely hate and dread in trailer music. We also do stems in game audio. You know, because then you have this cool track, but you have a place in the game where. We just need some ambience, but maybe not that real music, you know. So then you maybe have a drone stem in that track and you can put that underneath the whole scene. So you mm. use the same track again. Basically mm. also, you know, like if you get a placement just from a stem, which happens all the time in trailer music, right? So so in... in, um, in in the game world do you compete with a few others or do they come to you specially do they how how does that look like because we are going to talk about uh connections but how how does oh yeah that work? that's very it's actually very different um in in the start of course it's a lot of emails and a lot of phone calls to people who pretty much don't need you to contact them right um just like anything else uh, but nowadays it's it's a i would say it's a good 50 50 mixture of either i get an email from people that i have worked with before mm. or the, someone who know me through other developers because even though it's a big world the game development world is very very small so everybody knows everybody at some point right so so um so yeah, 50-50, some people get to me. And then I tend to also do a lot of research on which games are coming out and who is the audio director for the companies that I like uh, would like to work with. Because in a game, game development company, there are a lot of different roles, even within just music and audio. So there is, um, there's if it's a bigger game, then there almost always is a what is called a audio director, which is kind of like the all-seeing overlord <laughs> of everything audio and music. So he he or she kind of makes, you know, the decisions. We need this kind of music, and, and or we need all these sound effects, and you know, kind of like uh, you know, overseeing everything, so all creatives can just concentrate on creating stuff. Um, and sometimes they end up using a lot of different composers. I just worked on a title, which I can talk about now, which is called Tempest Rising, um, where we we were, uh, I think, six or seven composers on that game. Uh, you know, everyone bringing uh, their special thing to the table. So we have a lot of go-tuned, heavy, eight-string metal stuff. And we have a lot of more horror, ambient sound design stuff and orchestral stuff and so on. So, so everyone was kind of working together to create the, the whole soundtrack. Uh, and I believe five, six, seven, eight sound designers, I think, 
just on o- only on sound design. Um, so yeah, I I would say even though I get as it is now good game gigs and have some good game gigs planned for the future, then I still do a lot of either direct networking with people or just constantly keeping an eye out for what is coming because if they make a god of war whatever number they're in now four or something this year then they are probably going to make number five within the next two or three years right and they already begin the development of that while the current one is being released right so always looking out for what kind of games would be awesome to work on and then casually reach out to people you know just mention that i exist <laughs> like that mm. so and um so you're talking about they they come in with budgets so do they yeah. does a game and yeah i'm i'm ignorant i've never worked with a game so does, does it work with like an upfront budget and then does it work do, do, do you have royalties as well how does that work uh again not a definitive one answer to that but mostly there is a let's say the conversation is that the game developer contacts you and this asks asks for your rate or your price for a certain amount of music then when you have no- negotiated back and forth and, and have a actual fee that you will be writing for uh, then mostly you they are ha- happy to pay uh, 50% upfront and then 50% when the work is done because that that kind of you know that secures both parts um, in some way and and royalties not not really there are basically no royalties in in video games that's only if you can negotiate a deal with the game developer where you get the a certain percentage of the soundtrack sales afterwards mm. I, I would say you could consider that a royalty uh, but also because in the game world soundtracks are such a big thing uh, it's 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 very it's, it's a very big thing that that people really it's it tend, tend to spend a lot of time on you know there are videos on YouTube where people do don't go through the games they actually go through the soundtracks and talk about how who did it and, and, and so on so no direct royalties but there can be in some some sense if you ne- negotiate it and and some game developers very big game developers simply just nope mm-hmm. but then then they give you a much bigger fee upfront to work for so yeah mmm So, I guess for me it's, it's it's not a negative thing so I just think it's how, how you look at it yeah so I guess I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll take it back a little bit so let's say a uh, game developer contacts you says I want you to work on yeah. this for the next six months um, let's negotiate yeah. a, a 50 a 50 50 percent upfront 50 percent uh, after you're done yeah. so yeah let's say you're working on it for six months is that your whole thing while you're doing it like like yeah, work-wise what I can mm-hmm. concentrate like, on uh, yeah I would say uh, it's 50 percent focus on on that only because when it comes down to that a contract is locked and you And the work to actually starts so then it is a lot of work mm-hmm. because also because you know in for example in trailer music we have all these what should I say cool tools you know uh, with with cert- certain sounds that are already created and ready to go and synth patches and, and, and so on you know because sometimes we have to do insanely quick turnarounds. In trailer music so it's good to have all the you know for example all the keep forest stuff they do fantastic synth pulses and so on that you can quickly lay under these stuff to get going and get started right and mm-hmm. um, but in video games they they don't want that they want 
new and fresh stuff. So it's mm. all about creating your own new synth patches and kind of, you know, develop a sound for the game. Because they, of course, if they want the big hybrid orchestral stuff, then you got the orchestra part nailed down. But but you still need some something that uh, where where people can recognize the music. Oh, that's from that game, right? You know, like I I don't know if you've heard Mick Gordon stuff from Doom Eternal, but you know when when it's him, <laughs> for example. So, so I guess, yeah, eighty percent, and and I and I say eighty percent focus on that because I always always I I need to you know, even though you get paid doing uh, doing the the game music, then you you know, if a cool custom trailer brief comes in. Or if another kind of brief that would be really cool to work on and even cooler to get a placement with, then I always make sure that I do have some time ready to go if it should happen right. So kind of kind of keeping the the door slightly open all the time. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Wow. That's that's a good. Uh... Uh, that's that's a huge that's a huge thing that we'll also uh, I feel like uh, double click on because as somebody in sync, in my opinion, the door always has to be at least twenty percent open. Yeah. And I, yeah. I'm, I understand always. as I'm as I'm under, as I'm speaking to you because, I mean, people are actually funny enough when you get to a certain uh, level of communication. People are actually expecting you to have a little bit of an opening for them. Um, yep. I mean, especially bigger. I, I don't know, like players who are very intentional about what they do, and they send you something that is your speciality, and then you're like, nah. Then it's uh, um, it's a bit of a a bummer yeah. for both sides. It's and it's yeah, kind exactly. of it kind of uh, cools down the relationship, and then not sure that the like the next brief uh, will 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 come to you and that's that that's a big big thing like leaving that door 20 percent open i feel like is super duper duper important to have longevity yeah, yeah exactly because that's what you want you, you you don't want the game project to suffer and you go, don't want your connections within the trailer and the library or the sync in the industry you don't want any of them to suffer right but yep. but for me at least the fact simply just is that when I am working on a game project, I need to have my main focus on this that because it's just such a big workload in the start. And then once you have the themes down and the overall soundscape down, then you can kind of lean back a bit more because then you just have to write with the tools that you created. But mm. for me, the first month if if I have a good amount of time for, for for a game project then the first month is always just trying out stuff you know sending stuff over and they tell you nope that's not it and then try again basically like a trailer brief right um so so yeah but but it's so 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 important to always have have the door open and and then even if something comes in and and you don't have the time or can't make it for the deadline that they have then sometimes actually mostly i've noticed if you just kind and communicate the right way with people and say hey i would love to do this i would love to have uh, a track or two on this album you're planning but i can't make it within the deadline would it be possible to push it a few days mm. stuff like that you know because mostly uh, publishers have set a deadline because that's where they are aiming to be done with stuff, right? So so they can get things out in a timely manner and still be trendy with the type of music they release and so on. But mostly if, if you just ask if you can get a, a day or two extra to really nail it down, they'd mostly be happy to do it. That, that's what I've experienced, at least. So Yeah, that's fire. That's fire. And and 
Yeah, it has happened to me in the past where um where a label doesn't seem as interested like in my in my services and that, but then yeah. I know it, you know, like but then I yeah. I've sent that yeah, email. Yeah, yeah. I've been professional yeah. and now they were like, mm, we have another a uh, hundred people working on this, yeah. uh, so it's okay, kind of thing. Um and then I'm like, okay. Like step back, it, but but the ball is yeah. definitely not in my court at this at this point. So I, I love how you're saying that. I love how you're saying uh, that um, finding your freshness is also something is something that definitely exists highly in the in the in the gaming world. And I also oh, yeah. love uh, what you were saying about about the fact because you're still killing it in the trailer game like i can see uh i can see your success and 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 your flex Thanks. no but i, I can see I, I can see <laughs> i can see i can see i i can see really that you're you're doing the game thing um and congrats for that last game it looks dope well, and thanks. um and uh you're doing that and you're also still killing it like your assets are still you know like you're you were talking about sowing seeds and now we're, we'll talk we'll transfer and talk about uh, um connections and how you make them now but uh, um you've sowed a lot of seeds in this in the trailer space you've made a huge ridiculous chunk of tracks and now they're working for you basically and this yeah. is to, yeah. this is the epic real epic thing to me about Uh, about doing what you do and having that 20 door uh, 20% door open and also and in integrating all these things into something that is unique to you um so that's that's a big one man um you were talking about networking and uh and and sowing these kinds of seeds and you've you've shared with me a, a strategy that's that's not very real, uh, not very hmm it's it's a networking thing that you're doing that's not very traditional i guess because traditional is just going email uh but you're doing oh, yeah, something yeah, yeah. that is um that is more long term for yourself so I, i would love to to ask you about that and how you kind of expand from that like how do you what are your expectations when you're doing that and what are you, what is your mindset going to it Yeah. And what is well, it? Well, <laughs> <hey, hey, hey. laughs> well, my whole networking thing is that I, instead of asking for work, firstly, I just have an interest in getting to know people, first and foremost. Because, you know, if and, and I know if I had a game, game development company and I just got an email from some composer dude, Uh, saying, hey, I'm cool because I've done this. Don't you want to hire me? Why, why should I hire you? I have absolutely mm. no idea who you are, right? Mm. So what I've been doing a lot of the last year or two, actually since COVID hit, you know, you get we, we got a lot of time on the couch, right? So, <laughs> um, so I've been going about it the, to really research the game development companies, I really want to do some work for. And it's mostly actually uh, development companies that do the games that I play myself. So mm -hmm. it's it's an obvious no-brainer. Um, but I, I do a lot of research about the people within the company and the people that I need to get in contact with to possibly maybe not even a hundred percent sure but maybe get to work with down the line so what i do is that i i for example i find out who is the audio director for a game development company and then i reach out very casually not talking about work or anything just reaching out because i already know their work because i've been playing their games so i maybe compliment them on, on the work they've done and then say, hey, I love this and find some of my favorite parts of, of either the music or or the audio in general and, and kind of point it out, you know, and, and just talk, you know, in, in an email. I've, I've basically tried to treat them as a human instead of a possible job. 
So mm -hmm. just talk to them to get to know them and then as quickly as possible, get on a Zoom call with them. Again, with not not with the, the mission of getting a gig in mind, but more a, okay, we learned to know each other over email. Let's take it on and the next step and actually talk and see each other. And, and that way plants you know, future seats so they actually have a face on a person when they maybe might need something down the road. And then again, if I don't get a gig from it, well, I got a new human and friend in the network, right? That's not so bad, I guess. <laughs> so so that's kind of my, my whole, if, uh, call it philosophy behind networking. Instead of trying to find actual gigs i just try to befriend humans and people yeah i love that i mean it's also important to weed out the people who you don't want to work with i mean it's it's oh yeah uh it, it's and it's a good way to do it again we were talking uh we were talking before that about emailing and it's uh, like i don't know how yeah. there's not a viral video a viral uh, um uh like TikTok or something online that is about um that is about how people read emails yeah. you know like, <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's be right. like yeah what's up and it can be what's up like it could be so many yeah. like the tonality can can change from it does it changes from person to person and one person can get offended yeah. by something that will make yeah. another person laugh and it's just yeah for and, and and it's it's just a thing and seeing the person who you may be working with makes it so much easier down the line to actually work with them. Yeah. It's like, man, like, yeah. again, with, with this, uh, just starting this podcast and starting to talk to people, I see, I see it as a tree, right? Like I see it as yeah. a, a bunch of branches, which I'm like, okay, this is, this is uh, uh, potentially like, I'd love to explore that, maybe give it some water. Or this maybe is not the right thing for now, but I, I've seen the faces. I've felt uh, the energy, maybe not in, uh, uh, in person, but I've, I've created some sort of a connection that is more than just a, a, um, a dry email. And this is what actually, I mean, this is what I'm doing with the podcast is I'm getting to to know people and, you know, and it, it proves to me that people are actually wanting to give the love back to me for sharing this information with them. And then they create, yeah. and then I'm connecting them with the next label, label they work with because they, it's been on the podcast. And then there's such a, an ecosystem here that, um, that yields, yields re good results for, for not only me, yeah. Um, and I feel like exactly. what you're saying is so powerful because again, like I, I'm, I'm thinking to me, the game is a completely uh, unknown space for me, but you know, yeah. like speaking to you, it's like, okay, it's, I'll keep these, I'll keep these 20, 20% 20 open because it's, uh, yeah, it's just super, uh, duper fascinating to me and you were like and after uh and a few months ago like w when we were talking you were like oh send me some stuff maybe i'll maybe uh we'll use it on a game or something like that so that's the door that's that's open for me because yeah. we've spoken um exactly and yeah so I, I recommend highly 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 to just like take this in advance that you it, it take this uh this this info that you just gave and and just uh implement it because again like there's ways to go about emails but yeah. there's also ways to go about humans like humans i mean oh yeah, yeah yeah who will they give the job somebody who they know or somebody who they they don't know who are in the same level exactly there's no there's exactly. no question about it there's no single yeah. question about it who would they take no so exactly and and that's that's i i can give another example of, of this uh, why this works because and and this this is not a a, a flex <laughs> in any way I, I guess it is in the, in the old trailer world you know but i got to work with audio machine which is absolutely impossible they're fire for, for new composers right now yeah. uh, but i got to do that by 
befriending one of the people working there and talking to them, not about, hey, can I do some music for you guys? But, you know, just nerding out on, on music. And then they figured out, hey, you like doing this stuff. We need a bit of this stuff. And that's my latest placement that was with Audio Machine. Right. So uh-huh. it's, 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 it don't, don't treat people like, like they can make you money or get you gigs and stuff yeah. like that. Treat people like people. And then if, if it all works out, then that's just great. And if it doesn't work out, well, you got to know an, another person and that's great. Yeah. Well, it's right. also great. I mean, yeah. I was just uh, talking last week uh, to a dude, an amazing dude uh, from, from England. And he was just speaking about how you, you, you should take bad contracts and, and I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate. Yeah. Like, 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 do you know what? Just like a flashback came to me. Like you were speaking in, uh, in, in your, um, in, uh, in your interview with Richard about, mm-hmm. uh, about how you took anything that came your way. And I oh, yeah. think that yeah. it's so, sure. it, it is so, so crucial. And it's, it's actually a rite of passage to get a few shitty ones, to get a few sh- yeah. like bad interactions out of, of the way, understand what it means, what it looks like, learn keep on doing because you're not going to stop making tracks. You're going to keep making them. Oh. You're going to keep working with a bunch of libraries until something lands. And, um, and yeah, and taking all these steps and making all these connections just gets you closer to that thing, that audio machine, that like audio machine machine is kind of arguably a Holy grail of, 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 uh, yeah, pretty uh, much placements. Yeah. So, yeah. And and yeah and and that's exactly it. Like uh, I want to just share something, uh, uh, like uh, I guess and a flex from from your boy. And uh, it's, yeah. it's I got <laughs> I got on a Universal album. I have no business in Universal, but um, uh, somebody I networked with happened to be doing an album for them, and he was like, "Yo, yeah. I love your vocals. Um, let me let, let me send you some stuff." We got working. We did ten tracks. We got paid up front. We're gonna probably get paid back end on these because yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. It's it's a big it's a it's a big label. It's a they they get a lot of stuff placed. So yeah, yeah, man. It's it's just like the these connections are everything. It's just everything, everything, yeah. everything. If you're not out there making connections, if you're practicing your craft and you're not really. Um, tying meaningful connections with some people that you resonate with who can be your uh, um your mentor or can be your uh collaborator if you're not doing that then you're missing something um, oh yeah 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 it's yeah. it's a creative job man and 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 we we need we need people to to get inspired to do creative things right and a lot of the stuff that i i do I, it's you know, if, if I'm just in the studio for a week without really, you know, reaching out or talking about to people, then I can feel my desire to actually do music. It drops a bit. It's, it kind of becomes, uh, not today, not today, not today, <laughs> right? But but if I spend time with people and, and, you know, get out and do stuff and get out in the sun and experience things, then I get home with the feeling, oh, I can't wait to wake up tomorrow because then I can start working. Mm-hmm. You know, people people fuel you with energy, even though like you think you are yeah. this monster composer that just can bash through hours and hours and hours of tracks. And that I'm sure there are a lot of people that can, but I can't. I, I need to have people in my life to you know feed energy off and 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 hopefully also deliver something back to them for sure yeah man that's that's fire i mean we're we're probably we're probably gonna talk offline but is there anything i don't know any any last um i guess how how, you know what like let me ask you an interesting question how do you feel like you've progressed? Oh, How do you feel like you've progressed since we've talked last? Like in the since the last time, was there like a uh, um a big step that you felt you went through or something that has opened for you? Hmm. I think the question is, did I actually progress? Um, <laughs> um 
Oh, well, if, well, I have to ask firstly, in, in a personal sense or in a creative music sense or just a whole... Men, you. Just one big... You. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I think actually becoming a grown-up and owning a house <laughs> did a, a lot to, uh, to me. Uh, you know, it puts everything in, in perspective and... and I know, I don't know. Some something happens when when you live in something you own. I think I I don't know really what it is, but but I I also felt it in my music because you know it was it's it's basically it was an a one eighty shift in in our personal space and and lives, and that really shined through in in actually really wanting to sit down and. Not just to write music, but we really work on the way I write music. Yeah, you know, we, we've talked about before that, for me at least, I, I don't like the the 12-hour days in the studio. I'm more of a, okay, if I can get this done in four hours and get the fuck out of here, then it's good. <laughs> but not because music means less to me. Uh, but you know the whole thing. I I think we talked about in about that in the last podcast, but I I also experienced a, a burnout where I actually didn't want to do music some years ago, um. So I I think I've I've spent a lot of time really diving down to what music means to me and and also diving down to spending a little more time on on certain things within the music thing and using a lot of time on also writing stuff that is not meant to be mm. synced or used in a game or anything, just writing music for my own self. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Did I answer the question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I mean, so yeah, you hit so many, uh, uh, so many, personal things within me i feel like you know yeah. being able i've had a a total f system fail lately like where my my body wasn't wasn't reacting to any food that i was putting into it positively oh man um, yeah and my stomach was in complete upset my my me, mine and my oh. girlfriend's relationship was going to shit like it was there was a lot of oh, things shit. that were happening yeah. and uh the thing that balanced at all was balance like it's it's it yes. feels dumb to say but you know, but you know like being able to to go every day and intentionally uh take my dog for a walk and play with my dog yeah. for like be, be with 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 her for two for about two hours a day i i want to believe that i spend with her and and just like having these um scheduled times i go to the sauna almost every evening um yeah and and having these these things that intentionally put me outside of this studio comfort um beautiful space uh it's just so so it was so big in my in my development lately so i know i've asked you about your development but i'm now i'm sharing something that that it really resonated with me and my story and also to be able to make music for 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 not for not for any with any purpose is, has been proven has proven a, to be a challenge for me um yeah but it's super interesting to kind of just like yeah shoot yourself shoot yourself into a situation where you're where you are more intentional about what you're doing you know especially if you're yeah. if you're not doing it full time and you have to i mean you have to have that time in in the studio so you can uh get yeah. the royalties or what what not that you want you want to build build yourself up but i mean don't grind yourself to the ground like a lot of people say grind, no. grind go back from home like don't sleep all that kind of uh, all that hustle uh porn that was out uh, until a few years ago it, it really yeah. doesn't doesn't um do justice to reality so nope. yeah. i i i don't care who who you are or how bad as you are everyone will hit the wall at some point if you just go about the constant grind and, and hustle all the time if it's it's not natural 
to to go that way. And and actually, you you named the word balance, and 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 I I think sometimes people tend to forget what balance actually means because people say they need balance in their life, but they are constantly pushing whatever they want. If it's music or if it's art in any other form or work, whatever. But people tend to forget that balance means that there is equal good and bad, right? So if you have spent 10 hours battling it out in the studio, uh, then you need 10 hours of just laying around doing nothing. That's balance. Mm. <laughs> I agree. So, so people, tend to, people tend to focus way too much on, hey, I'm not using spending enough hours in the studios. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But I never hear anybody say that, oh, I, I didn't get to play Xbox for four hours today. <laughs> oh, I didn't. You know, but, but, but it's, it's funny, but, but that is true balance. Yeah. That I actually, I started doing that to myself, actually, that saying, you need to slack more mm. and relax more. You know, and, and that's, that helped a lot. Yeah. And ask, and I mean, like I, I suggest people who listen to this, ask themselves, do you need to relax more? And, and just be, be true with yourself. Like be real. Yeah. And like, uh, um, because the, the brain wants to tell you, no, you got to work, you got to develop, you got to procreate, yeah. you got to do all these things. But are these things really things that you need? Like we are not in caves anymore. So no. you have the 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 sovereignty and the 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 power to make these choice, which is like a blessing and a curse, but it is yours. Whoever is listening to this, yeah. like if you're if you are listening to this, then you probably have the choice. And really, a question exactly. that I invite people to to think about is: Are you resting enough? Are you oh, yeah. are you hydrated? Are you moving? Oh yeah. Are you connected yeah. with nature in some way? Are you moving your back? Are you taking breaks? Like, I don't know. Uh, um, and still, I don't know for my for myself. I'm pro I'm still tweaking that. But these are questions yeah. that constantly come up because my life was very very close to to not looking very happy at this moment. So yeah. I mean, um, I'm. I, I challenge people to to actually think about these things, man. Where where can people? Can you remind them where where they can find you? Well, the place I'm mostly active is Instagram, and that is at uh, Sigurd the Music Dude. <laughs> I'll I'll, uh, I'll, link to, I'll link to it. Yeah, and and honestly, I have a, a Facebook page and Twitter and stuff, but. I tend to forget that they exist. So yeah, hit him on the IG. Instagram. Hit him on the IG. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bro, I'm so I feel so blessed to have you here and uh, and to to network with you face to face and to. Ah uh, man, it's always good. We have to go for round three at some point. Yes. Which is what? <laughs> what? A round three at some point. Oh we yeah, there will be a round three, and, yeah, and yeah. I told you I will. We. We will meet in Denmark. Like I'll I'll do the trip. Oh yeah. And when when time comes, I, I feel like more towards yeah. like autumn or or spring or winter or something like that. Like I wanna yeah wanna I wanna see Denmark at its finest, and yeah. we will we will get at to... at at its absolute depressing peak. Yes. <laughs> Give it to me. I have too much happiness in my life, bro. I need to yeah. have darkness Gen more than half of the day. Man, January and February in Denmark will crush you. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, Let's come go. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds good. It's a day. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, so thanks for coming on, bro. Thank you for having me. It's always great.